All right. Hey, Honors Chemistry. So I wanted to work through the Unit 4 notes um, doing the lab simulation just in case you cannot and do not have access to this website. I found out that it doesn't work well on the phone. So we're going to have to see if you don't have a computer or a tablet to work on. You could just watch this video. So in the late 18th century, Joseph Priestley, Anton Lavoisier, and others performed some critical experiments that helped Dalton develop his theories on the atomic model of matter. The simulation at this website will allow us to replicate some of the key experiments these scientists performed. And we're going to answer the questions on the website and keep track of our responses on this note sheet. So there's going to be a part one where we go to Joseph Priestley's work and answer some questions about that. There's going to be part two where we look at Antoine Lavoisier's work and record information like that. And then we're going to do part three with diamond and charcoal and answer some a question about that information. And make sure that you have this worksheet in front of you or this note sheet in front of you so you're able to keep track of all your work. And then finally, at the end, we're going to have some concepts or some, some conceptual, questions, conceptual questions that we're going to have to answer. All right, so let's go to this website. We're just going to put in our name as chemistry, of course. All right, and this information was already given on that worksheet. And these are just some directions for us. The scale and volume tools, tools in the upper left corner of the screen that follow can be used to measure the mass and volume of the reactants and products. If you notice, we're going to have to measure some masses and volumes as we're doing this. So that'll be there for us. So let's go to the laboratory. Little was known about matter or atoms in the late 1700s. In fact, even oxygen had not yet been discovered. Click on one Priestley to begin exploring the experiments that led to our modern understanding of matter. So we're going to go to Priestley first. In 1773, Joseph Priestley heated the mineral red calx. So as you can see in our part one, we're doing something with calx. In his laboratory, others had shown that calx, a red mineral, mineral, appeared to turn into the metal mercury. Priestley was the first to observe and collect a strange gas that was released from this process. All right, so we're going to use the scale and volume tools above left to measure the mass of the starting material and the mass and volume of the products left after you heat the calx. And we're going to record these observations on our worksheet. Okay, so if I'm looking at what I got here, if I want to get my mass, right, my mass tool says that I, and so I have to scroll on this. Initially, I have nothing in here. Initially, I have 100 grams of calc. So that's, we're in the column that says 100 grams, right? So we're starting with 100 grams, and I'm going to have to heat this up. Right, and I have no products in here yet. See how everything is zero, 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 zero. My volume in here, I have nothing in here. Nothing yet, nothing yet. Okay, all right, so we're gonna heat the calx now. And notice as we're heating the calx, we see bubbles, something is happening. I could even record the mass as it's changing. All right, so mass of each product and the volume of the gas. So I have a mass here now. The mass right now for us is 7.39. So I'm going to record on that sheet mass of each product. So I have 7.39. And in here, I have 92.61 grams. Now, there's only one space there, but you might want to split it in half. That I From my original 100 grams of calx, I have 92.61 grams. And the product that formed was 7.39 grams. So mass of each product, 7.39 grams. Just put that. Now let's do my volume of the gas, 5.171 liters. All right? I have nothing in here. My gas that I formed here is 5.171 liters. All right, now let's do 200 grams of calx. All right, so I have initially... 200 grams of calx. I have no products in here. Let me heat it up. I can actually see the mass changing, right? 
So my mass of calx in here now is 14.78 grams. Hmm, that looks like a pattern. So I have 14.78 grams. So for the column that says 200 grams, right? So we're over here. That column that says 200 grams, for mass of each product, we're going to put 14.78 grams. For the volume, 10.34 liters. So in that column where it says 200 grams and it says mass of each product, the mass we're going to put as 14.78 grams and the volume we're going to put as 10.34 liters. All right, I wonder what happens if I have 216.59 grams. So I heat this up, heating, heating, heating. I'm making a gas. All right, so now my mass is 16 grams, All right? So from the 216.59 grams, I should have 16 grams in here. I wonder how many grams are gonna be in my original flask. 200.59 grams, huh? So it's looking like the sum of these two masses must be equal. I think we've learned about that before, conservation of matter. The mass of my product is 16 grams, and the volume of my product is 11.21 liters. All right, so the volume of my product is 11.21 liters. All right, so we've collected that data. It's up to you now to answer questions one through three. What happened to the mass of the material in the flask as it was heated? What did you note about the masses of the gas produced and the mercury metal left in the flask? Right, like in this one, we started with 216, and now we have 200.59 and 16, and that looks like the sum is equal to our original. And the last question says, state the relationship between the volume of a gas produced and the mass of the calx that was heated. So you're going to need to come up with a relationship, maybe a ratio between the mass of the gas produced and the uh, the volume, sorry, the volume of the gas produced and the mass of the calx that was heated. So you're going to use that data that we collected in part one to answer this question. Stay tuned for my second video where we do part two.